quick shout out to my man Brian K, who asked the fantastic question of the Intel processors, the i3-579s, how do you tell them apart? Well, Intel's naming convention can be a little bit tricky at first to understand, but it's actually pretty intelligently laid out. So here's how it begins. First off, you have the i3-5709, which are typically, in, it's a brand number, and it typically is an indication of how powerful the processor is. The higher you go, the more powerful the processor is going to be. So obviously, people that are going to be doing like productivity stuff or just need basic computing will be fine with i3s or i5s. But those that want to do like gaming, video editing, this kind of thing, are going to want to hit, uh, hit go into the i7 or i9 processor family. The next number is then the generation. So if it's either... Uh, basically, it's like a 1 through 11 at this point, but if the new, the new ones are now 11, so if it says like i7-11xxxxx, uh, that means that it is the newest 11th generation processor. And of course, when the 12th gens come out, there will be a 12 there. Next is the SKU number. So basically, this is sort of like the, now you're getting into the nitty gritty of what the actual processor is. And again, typically, the higher the number, the more powerful it's going to be. Uh, the higher number it typically indicates something like the, the gigahertz or the power or the feed features that it is going to have. And then of course it's going to then be followed by a letter. Now those letter conventions are going to be a little bit tricky so I'm going to go ahead and dive into what each individual letter, uh, there, there's actually a slew of them so I'll skip most of them but I'm going to go into what most people are going to be looking for. It starts with the letter G and that will typically indicate the graphics performance. Now Intel has uh, levels 1 through 7 and that's the onboard graphics power of the particular processor you're looking to get. So of course if you have like let's say a G7 it means that the integrated graphics are going to be quite fast and, and sort of tailor-made for maybe like gaming or, or some light video editing, that kind of thing. Of course, you're always going to want discrete graphics if you're going to be doing some serious gaming or video editing. Now, that's where this kind of gets a little fun. They do have a designation specifically for discrete crap graphics cards, and this is something you'll want to pay attention to. The letter F indicates that you have to have a discrete graphics card. Now, that's very important for people that are building their own gaming rigs. For example, if you're building a gaming desktop and you get a processor that has the letter F in it from Intel, you have to have either an NVIDIA or AMD graphics card to go along with it. It will not work with any built-in, uh, any integrated graphics. And that's especially important if you're getting a motherboard that has an integrated graphics chip in it. You need to make sure that you have, uh, that you see whether or not it has that letter F. And if it does, you need a separate graphics card. Next up is going to be the letter H. Now the letter H indicates that it's like optimized for mobile uh, usage. So most laptops are going to have the H in it. And then you'll see some of them that have a letter K. The letter K indicates that it is unlocked. That means that you can uh, basically overclock the processor if you want to. Uh, so again, if you're a, a gamer or an enthusiast, you'll want to either on the desktop or the laptop side. Anything with a K means that you can kind of fiddle with it. And then a Q means a quad core. So sometimes you'll see H, HK, and HQ, and those will indicate whether or not you can unlock them or if it's a quad core processor. The next up are going to be T, U, and Y. Those are typically for lower power processors, meaning that they're optimized for battery life. Again, very good for mobile stuff. And this naming convention goes across the board of their i3 through i9 processors and of course Intel has Xeon CPUs and, and even still has like Celerons and Pentiums kind of feel like they should just stick with uh, you know either maybe like the Pentiums or the i3s I can't believe Celeron is still around but anyway there you have it that is the Intel naming convention I hope this was helpful to anybody that is curious regarding the Intel i series core processors thanks for watching be back with another video soon